Oke, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let's glad to see you again. This spiritual meeting this morning. And I uh, think we are going to talk about statistics in more technical terms. And I've already shared a book in our WhatsApp group. Okay, you can check the book there. It's a dictionary of research methodology and statistics in applied linguistics. Okay, I'm going to share the book here. It's uh, written by Tafa Koli. Hussein Tafa Koli. Dictionary of Research Methodology and Statistic and Applied Linguistics. So, like other dictionaries, then this dictionary defines terms in both research methodology and statistics, especially which are applied in language studies, not linguistics especially, like linguistics, um, not statistics in general or research methods in general, but in applied linguistics, then all the terms uh, can be found here. The description, the definition can be found here. So, um, Example abstract, a brief summary of research that includes the research questions, the methods, use, and results. Okay, and so on and so forth. Okay, this is the book that I think um, important. Yeah, it's very important to you to read the book because this book contains information or knowledge in research methodology and statistics, which is especially used for applied linguistics. And teaching language, English language teaching is part of applied linguistics, including in the English language teaching is, um, of course, how to Organize how to write um, research proposal or how to write a research report for your scripts, your thesis. Okay, so I'd like you to think important way to download the book and try to read the book. Okay, well, now let's go to our Statistics. It is in the book, page 232. Statistics is defined as a body of mathematical techniques or procedures. So, again, as I told you last week, we talk about statistics, we talk about mathematics. But statistics deals with mathematical, mathematical techniques or procedures which are used for gathering, organizing, analyzing, interpreting, and displaying numerical data. So you pay attention to the kind of data we are going to discuss in this lecture. Numerical data, not descriptive data, not qualitative data, but data in the forms of 
numbers. That's why it is written in numerical data. So as a body of knowledge, statistics actually is a branch of mathematics, especially techniques or procedures, uh, techniques of subtraction, multi multiplication, addition, submission, okay? Um, or procedures, techniques of procedures, which we need in our research when we try to gather data. And gathering data, for example, it is necessary for a researcher to set up a sample. A number of respondents will be given questions, will be observed, or will be um, treated, experimented, or gathering data. And the data you gather in this research is in the forms of numbers, not in the form of words, sentences, or texts, or pictures, numbers. The example is grade or score, testing scores. Okay, a teacher, English language teacher, in his or her activities, makes tests, okay, organize tests or evaluation among the students. And the results of the test is score or grade. So, so the students success or failure will be determined by the scores, the grades. If the score or grade is above the minimum requirement for uh, KKM, criteria katunasan minimal, minimum achievement criteria, for example, 75, and the student gets 78 or 80, then the student is considered to be successful in learning English language. But if he or she gets less than 75, less than the minimum requirement level, for example, the standard, the criteria is 75, but the student gets 70 or 72, then he or she would regard it as a failure, okay? He or she hasn't met, hasn't fulfilled the minimum requirement or criteria. KKM, right? Criteria Kutundasan minimum. So that's an example of numerical data. So in this case, before you actually go to school to collect data, then you must try to plan how the data would be gathered, would be collected. And when you try to decide sample from population, you try to say, for example, the population is 200 or 2,000, right? 2,000 students. And you think that it is not possible for you to, to do a research among the 2,000 students because the number is too many for you, this number. Time is very limited. Then you must take a sample of the population. The population is 2,000, and the sample, the actual respondents or students involved in your research. Okay, let's say, for example, 10% of 2,000. 10% of 2,000 is 200. So, you already apply mathematical technique or procedure here. From 2,000, 
we only do the research over 200 students. How could it be accepted as representative? There are explanations on how a sample is taken from a population. Okay. How can you say that those 200 students represent 2,000 students in a research? The explanation is done by using mathematical techniques or procedures. That is, for example, you say 10%. Okay, 10% is the, the, the procedure, the technique, percentage is technical procedure you use in uh, setting up a symbol out of uh, population. Okay, um, I'm, go I'm going to stop for a while because of the other and we're going to continue later. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, um, let's continue. So this is the illustration of population and sample. It's also taken from the same book, page 471. What do you want to generalize to? So if you want your research is applied to be applied to a uh, group of people, large group of people, larger group of people, then 
this is called population or theoretical population but say for example 2000 2000 students have you any means to access all those two students 2000 students in say in a month no sir it's too difficult the thousand students are spread all over the city in for example 15 schools and it's impossible for me to come to all the 15 schools and meet all the students in a week for example again do you want to ask a question no I'm sorry, okay. sir. I can hear your voice clearly. Oh, yeah? Yes, sir. What about the other students? Um, Pika, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I cannot hear you. you yes, hear sir. Okay. Okay. Um, it's because of the connection, right? Okay, I think, um, yes, I have to use, try to use another device. Right? Okay, um, what about now? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Can, can you hear me more clearly or the same as before? It's better, sir. Okay, it's better. Yeah. Right. Yes, um, can you see the slide? Yes. This yes, is sir. the number of students, 2,000 students, for example. You want to generalize, to apply the results of your research among these students, 2,000 students. Okay. 
This is called theoretical population. Okay, theoretical population. So for example, all students of SMP in Jakarta, okay, 2,000 students, theoretical population. So the result of that could be true among the 2,000 students. But do you have access to those students? No. Why? Because all the students are in different schools. They are distributed in, for example, to 20 schools all over the city. And it's not possible for you to get across to all the 2,000 students in one week or in one month. It's difficult for you, especially in this pandemic era, it's not possible for you to get access to all those 2,000 students. Now, the possible number of students you can meet and ask questions or observe is smaller than 2,000. For example, 200. Okay, sir, if I, I, it is must for me to to come to school and talk to students, observe them, might, maybe, maybe one school is possible. Okay, one school. How many students are there in school? In the school, there are about 600 students. Sir. Can you meet all of them? No. So I could only meet 200 students out of 600 because I, I want to focus on students of 7th grade or 8th grade or 9th grade, 200. Okay, this is called the study population. The, the number of students you have access to. Access here means you can meet them, you can observe them, you can give them tests, you can give them questionnaire. Okay, this is the study population. So theoretical population is bigger than the study population. And now what, what about the actual research? Are you going to observe all the 200 students? No, I'm going to observe only maybe one or two classes. Okay, one or two classes. And in, in one class, there are 30 students. So how many students you are going to actually meet and observe? Two classes means 60. Okay, 60 students. And this is the sampling frame, this, the sampling frame. So you try to calculate out of this 200, then you, you think of possibility then you decide the sample is 60 students and the 60 students here are involved in your study you meet them you talk to them you observe them okay is it possible for you to observe 60 students in a while in say for example in one meeting or two meetings is that possible for you to do so P3, which is possible. Meeting 60 students, 200 students, or 2,000 students? 60. 60, okay. That's called sample, okay? Is it is it now clear to you the difference between sample and population? Sample is... Yes, not yet. Okay. Sample is the actual number of students or respondents the teacher tries to collect the data from. Okay, that's sample. And the sample, the results of the research you do with the sample could be accepted as true to the population, both the study population or the theoretical population. Meaning, if you 
study or do research with 60 students, then the results could be regarded to be true among the study population and also theoretical population. Okay? Yes. So what act you actually do is to go to school, talk to the teacher, and get permission to observe. Observe can be in the form of testing, right? So it is not always observation, it's always watching them in the learning activities, but it can be also in the form of testing and also observation in the form of recording. For example, if the school is uh, operating uh, CCTV in every classroom, then you can ask the master to to let you uh, copy the video recording of the activity in a particular lesson and so on and so forth. That's also observation. Okay, so this is the procedure. And this kind of procedure is part of statistical activity, statistical practice. So what statistics here is um, important is in deciding the number of sample, the number of study population, the number of theoretical population. What about if the theoretical population is 2 million, okay, 2 million, or 200 million, or 200, or 300 million? Say, for example, I'm going to make uh, research on um, all the people of Indonesia. And, you know, Indonesian population today is about 280 million, 280 million. So if you want to make a study with 280 million people, and that's the theoretical population, then what is your study population? What is your symbol? Can you do the same procedure as you did with the students and you get 60 students here? Of course, the answer no. You cannot do the same procedure as you did in deciding 60 students out of 2,000 theoretical population to 100 study population. With 280 million people, then the procedure would be different. For example, by clustering system. Okay, clustering system. So you divide the 280 million people into, for example, two or uh, 20 or 30 clusters. And the cluster, the clustering technique is applied also in, in uh, deciding sample of uh, population. Okay, so this is it in, uh, in terms of uh, English language research then I think what we do is generally like this. Uh, we have theoretical population, we have study population, and we have sample. From study population to sample, there is a procedure which is called sampling frame. In the sampling frame, there is there are criteria, for example, who will be eligible to be the sample of the research. There are criteria here. And also there are um, techniques to consider. If the your access is, is, um, is uh, more easily done, then the number of symbol will be bigger. If the access is more difficult, then the number of symbol is smaller. So the number of 60 students could be changed into 20 if the access is more difficult. It could be changed into, for example, 100 if the access is 
easier. So a number of factors would be considered in deciding the number of sample here from the study population. Study population from the theoretical population. So the keywords to sampling technique is access, right? Access. The easier the access and the smaller the number of people involved in your research. Okay, um, this is an example of how uh, data gathering is done in your research, gathering of data. And then the second activity, statistical activity in your research is organizing data, okay, organizing data. In gathering data, it's, it's, it's a common, it's a common practice to, to only observe a limited number of participants or respondents for your research. But in the end, you can make a statement that even though my research is done over a limited number of sample or respondents, but I can claim that this is true for both study population and theoretical population. Why? Because of number of criteria, for example, they, they have the same curriculum, they are at the same uh, uh, grade, and the teachers are also of the same background, so on and so forth. There are criteria. Okay, after data are gathered or collected, then you go to organizing how the data were organized. The data were organized, for example, by using classification. Okay, classification. Classification is one of the ways to organize data. And people usually use table, right? Table is used to, um, to organize your data. And the table should be made, okay? should be made by using a particular theory, a particular uh, concept. For example, um, you want to make a research about students' speaking skills. Okay, students' speaking skills. And in your gathering data, in your gathering of data, then you use, for example, a technique of interview to, to create, to score the student speaking skills. Okay, then you got data, the scores of the speaking of the students were already gathered. And after data were gathered, then the next step is organize the data. Okay, 60 data of speaking. And the speaking tests then were divided into, for example, three, three sections, okay? Uh, first section is, um, for example, pronunciation. The second section is for um, intonation. The third session is uh, fluency. And you got these three criteria from a theory written by, for example, Brown. So in, in organizing the data, then the table should be made by using the three criteria. Um, pronunciation, intonation, and um, fluency. Okay, so there is a column of intonation, and then there is a column of pronunciation, and that's a column of fluency. Okay, and that's how our 
how data are organized. The organization of data must use a theory. You cannot use your own opinion or perception when you organize data. Theories are important in organizing data. And the, your theory is usually written in the literature review section. Okay? In your literature review section, then you must put there the theory that you want to use in uh, gathering, organizing, analyzing, interpreting data. Okay, the next step is analyzing. Analyzing means um, comparing. Or in statistics, the analysis can be done in two ways, okay? The one way is descriptive analysis. The second way is um, descriptive and you have descriptive statistics and you have uh, inferential statistics. This is in analyzing your data. So data analysis can be done descriptively. Okay. So again, descriptive here does not necessarily mean the same as qualitative research. Why? In statistics, what is meant by descriptive technique or descriptive analysis is based on numbers. Okay. So the analysis, even though it is called descriptive, must be based on numbers, numerical data. It is different from descriptive analysis in qualitative research. In qualitative research, the descriptive analysis is solely based on words or expressions like sentences, paragraphs, and even pictures. But in Statistics, what is meant by descriptive analysis is based on numerical data. So there are numbers, okay, there are numbers, but there are also descriptions. In qualitative research, there is no number, but there is description. That's the difference between quantitative or statistical approach and qualitative approach. This in analysis. Descriptive statistics, and then we have also inferential statistics. In inferential statistics, um, the analysis is done by applying a particular formula, okay? For example, correlation or regression. So we are going to talk about correlation and regression later, but this is the technique of inferential statistics that we apply in our research. And then interpreting. Interpreting data would be uh, decoding, right? Decoding data would be different when you do a qualitative and when you do a quantitative research. In a qualitative research, the interpretation of data would be done almost all using sentences. And the analysis, the interpretation is based on, uh, say for example, um, discourse analysis or um, content analysis techniques. And all techniques, qualitative discourse analysis, qualitative content analysis, are all in the forms of words or sentences. But in statistics, the interpretation is based on the results of calculation, okay, number calculation, by applying a particular formula. For example, uh, correlation. There is a formula of correlation. And the result of the calculation by applying the formula would result in what is called to be 
coefficient coefficient correlation coefficient and the coefficient the number of correlations spread of a uh, uh, range between 0 and 1 the closer to 1 the more positive the correlation is the closer to 0 the less the degree of correlation so the closer to 1 the higher the degree the closer to 0 the higher the lower the degree of correlation that's interpretation very simple so in statistical analysis analysis uh, analysis and interpretation could be done in maybe four to five pages but in qualitative analysis in a qualitative research data analysis could be lengthy okay maybe 20 to 40 pages because all the analysis is done in the forms of explanations or descriptions. The interpreting, the interpretation is all the same. It needs 10 to 20 pages. Okay, so very different. If you apply different approaches and the way how you analyze and interpret data would be different too. In statistical analysis, then the both analysis and interpretation would be simpler. Four, two to four pages, enough. Okay. What about display? Display is a technique for a researcher to make the results of the research readable, more easy to be read by people in general the readers in general. That's why people sometimes get confused when they read numbers, right? For example, correlation, coefficient. People would not understand what is the meaning of correlation coefficient. But if the display is made in the form of, say, for example, chart or graph, then people in general would understand the presentation of data more easily. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. All those activities of activities in dealing with data in our research and using numerical data, then all these activities are called statistical procedure. And the most important step after all these five procedures is the decision making okay decision making uh, based on data data analysis and data interpretation say for example you try to see whether there is a relationship between uh, reading activity and um, speaking skills Oh, sorry, reading activity and writing skill. Theoretically, there are researchers and researches showing that there is correlation or relationship between reading activity and writing skill. But, you know, you can still do a research on that topic even though people have proven oh, there is a clear correlation between reading and writing. But, you know, you're not certain, you're not positive about this and you try to make a research. And that's okay. You may make a research of a, an issue that's already, that has already been uh, researched by different people in different countries. But, you know, my, I might get another type of finding here. Okay. So, you do research to find out whether there is a relation between reading and writing among particular students. Okay, and after getting the data, after analyzing the data and interpreting the results of the analysis, 
then you come to conclusion that there is no relationship between reading activity and writing skill, which is different from the general findings of other researches. Well, since the result of your research is like that, then it helps you to provide uh, insight to the English teacher in this, that school to make a decision. Okay, for example, if there is no relationship between reading and writing, what is the decision? The decision is okay. Um, there should be less hour spent for teaching reading. Okay, why? Because reading has no relationship with writing. So to improve the student's writing skills, then the teacher decides to use another technique, not reading technique, but another technique. This is one example of decision making, which is based on data or which is based on findings of a research. Okay, this is um, the definition of statistics, okay? And the function of statistics is, this is a tool, okay? A tool for what? A tool for measurement. So in terms of English language teaching, then statistics can be used to measure whether your students have achieved a particular level, whether your students have been successful in learning all the materials you teach, and also to evaluate whether or not a particular method or technique of teaching would be continued in the future or would be stopped right now. And this is also a basic tool for research. Okay, um, everything in the definition would be clearer later after we discuss more technical and also in examples. For example, in um, educational setting, the use of statistics is very, is very significant in uh, measurement and evaluation of your student's achievement. And later, we are going to use Excel, okay, MS Excel application to, to see uh, whether the scores of the students would help you and the teacher in providing a tool for measurement and evaluation of the student's achievement. Okay, so yeah, maybe two or three weeks in the future, we are going to practice using Excel to measure and evaluate the student's success or failure. And that's why it's important for you to, in between now and three weeks to come, you get data from the school. Have you got the data from the school or not? Irina. Have you got the data from the school? Have you tried to contact the language, English language teacher of the school? Not yet, sir. <laughs> Not yet, sir. Okay, but you know, it's important for you to practice uh, in in this measurement and evaluation, right? Because as a teacher, you would be asked by that master to tell him or her how do you evaluate your student's success in learning English? And that can be done by using statistics. And we are going to discuss this later when we start using MS Excel. Okay? So in in between, right, you have one, two or three weeks to, to get data from schools. Okay? So contact an English language teacher at a school, talk to him, to him or her, and 
tell him, tell her, tell him that you need to get data, to get data about the students' scores in English language. Okay, can be from a daily tests or from semester test. Okay, but try to get original scores, right? Not scores from the report. Yeah. Usually the scores of the report has been calculated following a certain formula. In the research, data are original facts. Okay. Data are original facts. Only classified. Classified facts. But not calculated facts. Calculated facts are not any more data. Okay? So your data should be original facts from the school. Maybe daily test scores, right? Daily test scores. Not report scores. Okay? So in two or three weeks, try to get the scores from a school, real school, real teacher, right? Do not get from imaginative teacher or imaginative imaginary school because I want you to learn from uh, something real, okay? From something that is real in their life because uh, this is what I want to do, authentic teaching activities, authentic teaching materials. Authentic means real, not fabricated, not imaginary. Okay, any other questions? No? No, yeah. dear. Okay. If you still have confusion or you, you may watch the video recording later in my YouTube channel. Okay, thank you. Sir. Yes, Vika. Sir, sorry. Yes. Sir, if there are any assignment or task for us, can you write it in our WhatsApp group? Because when we listening, sometimes there are uh, ada gangguan gitu loh, sir. Jadi kurang okay. jelas. So, okay, if there any to... task yes. for us, can you write it? Yeah, I would, I, I would share the information in our WhatsApp group. And usually the instruction is in Cipeda because they're supposed to submit the task in Cipeda, right? Cipeda. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for 